Gianna Berretta Mola was born in Magenta, near Milan in Italy, on October the 4th, 1922, the tenth of 13 children. From her earliest youth, she accepted the gift of faith and received an excellent Christian education from her parents. After earning degrees in medicine and surgery from the University of Pavia in 1949, she opened a medical clinic in Mesero near Magenta in 1950. She specialized in pediatrics at the University of Milan in 1952 and thereafter gave special attention to mothers, babies, the elderly, and the poor. When Jana completed her university studies, she thought very seriously about going to Brazil to be closer to her brother, a Capuchin friar, serving as a medical doctor. He had spent his whole life in Brazil serving the poor. Jana's spiritual director raised concerns for her health amid the extremely demanding missionary work conditions. Both the spiritual director and the Bishop of Bergamo advised against Jana's traveling to Brazil. She was to spend her whole life in Italy. On September 24, 1955, Jana married Pietro Mola in St. Martin's Basilica in Magenta. Together they would have four children, Pierluigi, Mariolina, Laura, and Gianna Emanuela. Gianna met the demands of mother, wife, doctor, and her passion for life with great simplicity and great balance. She loved culture, fashion, and beauty. She played piano. She was a painter, enjoyed tennis, mountain climbing, and skiing. She attended the symphony, theater, and opera in Milan. She also loved to travel. In her diary, Jana once wrote, Love and sacrifice are closely linked, like the sun and the light. We cannot love without suffering, and we cannot suffer without love. In September 1961, towards the end of the second month of pregnancy with her fourth child, Jana had to make a heroic decision. Physicians diagnosed a serious fibroma in the uterus that required surgery. The surgeon suggested that Jana undergo an abortion in order to save her own life. A few days before the child was due, she was ready to give her life in order to save that of her child. She said, if you must decide between me and the child, do not hesitate, choose the child, I insist on it. Save the baby. On the morning of April 21st, 1962, her daughter, Gianna Manuela was born. Despite all efforts and treatments to save both of them, on the morning of April 28th, amid unspeakable pain, and after repeated exclamations of, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jana died. The young mother was only 39 years old. She died as a result of sacrificing her life so that her unborn child in the womb could have the maximum chance at life. Jana showed that faith is a personal decision which involves one's whole life. Her husband Pietro described Jana's life as an act and a perennial action of faith and charity. It was a non-stop search for the will of God for every decision and for every work with prayer and meditation, Holy Mass and the Eucharist. Already at her death, the young mother was well known for her virtues. Many people attended her funeral mass. People spoke freely of her kindness and charity. Her fame did not cease when she was placed in the tomb of the little cemetery of Mesero. People continued to talk about her and speak about the way she lived an extraordinary virtuous life. Several months after her death in December 1962, the Civil Provincial Administration of Milan presented St. Jana's family with a gold medal in her memory. Talk of Her Holiness continued to spread, and in 1972, Cardinal Giovanni Colombo of Milan, having received the favorable opinion of the Bishop's Conference of Lombardy, promoted the cause for her beatification and requested the compilation of informative documents and records. This was the beginning of a long and extensive investigation that is undertaken in every cause for sainthood. On April 28, 1980, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini, the newly appointed Archbishop of Milan, with the approval of Pope John Paul II, officially introduced the cause for beatification of the servant of God, Gianna Berretta Mola. The designs of Providence wished that both miracles required for her beatification and canonization would come from Brazil. The official miracle required for Jana's beatification took place in her brother, Father Alberto's hospital in Brazil. Mrs. Lucia Silva Cirillo was hospitalized in October 1977 
due to an infection following a cesarean delivery with a stillborn child. The physician's diagnosis was worrisome. The patient needed to be moved to another hospital equipped for a very difficult operation. The doctor's worries came to the attention of a nursing sister who prayed and asked others to pray to Jana for this woman's healing. Against all expectations, the following day, the physician observed that the patient had healed fully and completely. Not only was it no longer necessary for her to be moved with a long and difficult trip to another hospital, she was in fact able to go home perfectly healed. The touching story of Gianna Berretamola spread quickly throughout the entire world. On April 24, 1994, during the International Year of the Family, Pope John Paul II beatified Gianna Berretamola, mother of a family, in St. Peter's Square in Rome. Pope John Paul said that her witness was a hymn to life. Lucia Cirillo attended St. Gianna's beatification on April 24, 1994. And 10 years later, Elisabetta Cesar from Franca, Brazil, was found to be carrying a baby without amniotic fluid. She prayed to Blessed Gianna Mola and decided to carry the baby to term. Both mother and child survived. On May 16, 2004, a decade after Gianna's beatification, Pope John Paul II canonized Gianna Beretta Mola, offering this new lay saint to the church as a model of virtue holiness, motherhood, professionalism, and devotion. Gianna Barreta Mola was the last saint proclaimed by Pope John Paul II in May 2004, less than one year prior to his death. Having proclaimed her blessed in 1994 during the International Year of the Family, ten years later he would proclaim her a saint. It is no coincidence that the patron saints of the 2015 World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia would be these two great contemporary saints of the church, Gianna Barreta Mola and John Paul II. The church offers the lives of outstanding women and men such as Gianna to present an alternative gospel vision to what we are enduring in the world today. If we study her life carefully, we discover that she was truly a lover of life from its earliest moments of conception until natural death. As a young doctor, she specialized in pediatrics, but had a concern for all people whose lives were diminished in any way by suffering. She had an extraordinary, consistent ethic of life. What is even more unique about Jana's story is that at both her beatification ceremony in 1994 and her canonization 10 years later in 2004, her husband Pietro and three of the four children, the third daughter died in childhood, were sitting in the front rows in St. Peter's Square to witness an extraordinary moment in their family and in the life of their church. Jana's action at the end of her life in saving young John Emanuela, her daughter, was heroic in that she prepared for her final action every day of her life. Her final decision for life was the natural flowering and culmination of an extraordinary life of virtue and holiness, selflessness and quiet joy. She witnessed to the gospel in everyday life as a young person, a bride, a mother, and a doctor. Through the gift of her life, she accepted and honored every human being. She grew to love the Lord in the beauty of nature. Through her married love, she became a sign of Christ's love for the church and for humanity. Following the gospel example of Jesus, Jana gave herself entirely, generating new life. Virtuous people know what to do because of their informed conscience. They no longer do the good out of a sense of obligation, but rather they look for opportunities to do the good. St. John Amola continues to remind the church and the world of the necessity of a consistent ethic of life from the earliest to the final moments of human life. In our time, when permanent commitment is widely discouraged, when human life is cheap and disposable and family life is under siege, when abortion is all too available, when sacrifice and virtue are absent in so many lives, when marriage, a big question for many people, when many in the medical profession have little concern for the dignity and sacredness of every human life, when suffering is seen as a nuisance without any redemptive meaning, when goodness, joy, and simplicity are suspect. Gianna Beretta Mola shows this world, gripped by a culture of death 
an alternative gospel way of compelling beauty. At the time of her beatification in 1994, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini of Milan spoke these words during a meditation in the Magenta Basilica, the very place where Gianna had been married in 1955. Martini said, in beatifying Gianna, the Church acknowledges that in her it puts forward for the faithful to admire, venerate, and imitate the heroism of many parents, of many mothers, of many persons who, in the earnest evangelical service to their mission, honor Christ, the Church, and society, although conditions prevent this daily heroism, which exists and is great, from being brought to light. Cardinal Martini concluded in saying, we are not elevating Jana to the altars as if to excuse our own mediocrity, but rather to affirm that each of us can live a faithfulness that the Lord elevates to sainthood. May this pediatrician and mother of a family intercede for all families and all who are involved with the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia. Saint Jana, patron saint of mothers, physicians, and unborn children, pray for us and teach us to be agents and instruments of the culture of life.